thanks for the invitation. Uh, okay, um, today, sorry, what happened? Okay, today uh, I'm gonna talk about our recent work on the Owen Vect model. So it's about non perturbative RG flow and uh, effective action of this model. And this work was done with Sunset V. And uh, what I'm gonna talk uh, is in these two papers on archive. You can check it on archive. Mm, okay. Uh, okay, so in the study of condensed matter uh, theory, so the ultimate goal is to understand different phases and phase transitions, especially in the low energy limit or in the large length scale limit. And we would like to uh, know the universal behavior of the system. So the usual way we do is the renormalization group. Instead of study the microscopic degrees of freedom, we study cross-grained degrees of freedom. And the effective uh, action um, of those degrees of freedom describe the behavior at a larger length scale. And we can do the cross graining again and again. Uh, this in induce the so-called RG flow, um, which is described by the change in the uh, coupling constant. So quantitatively, this change is encoded in the beta function. And we can follow this RG flow until we arrive at the IR fixed point, if there is a fixed point. Um, and at this fixed point, the beta function is zero and the coupling constants are um, par parametrized the IR effective action. Okay, so in this talk, I'm gonna focus on the Owen vector model. So which is the simplest model for interacting n-component bosons. We use the Euclidean space time and in the continuum limit, the uh, field theory of this uh, model is written like this. And it has three terms, the derivative term, mass term and the quartic interaction term. And here phi is the n component boson vector at a space time coordinate r. Um, and each term respects the Owen global symmetry. So for a few, decades. So this theory was studied extensively by many methods. However, uh, almost all the analytical methods are perturbative. Uh, they treat the interaction term as a perturbation. So this means the interaction should be very small, uh, such, such as the epsilon expansion, one over ex expansion, and so on. Um, nevertheless, uh, they give a good prediction to the fixed point structure. So these works predict that there's a, a agree there is an interacting fixed point at finite interaction, which is now called Owen Wilson Fisher fixed point, when space dimension D is less than four. As, as D approaches to four, the uh, Wilson Fisher fixed point approaches to the Gaussian fixed point. So since those methods are perturbative, so there's only the study around the Gaussian fixed point is valid. So when the interacting fixed point is far away from the Gaussian fixed point, then more uh, exploration is needed. So here we use the non-perturbative quantum RG method to study the Owen vector model and obtain some new results. So here are the two results I'm gonna present in this talk. So first the result is about uh, beta functions during the RG flow. So they are highly constrained. Mm, so a, a longer statement for this point is that if we consider an action uh, for the Owen vector model with appropriate lattice regularization, then the action uh, in general can be written as a constant plus all the possible Owen invariant terms. And uh, each Owen invariant term can be written as a product of the uh, we call it fundamental operator. So O, so O, I, J, I and J are lattice sites because it regularized on lattice. And this operator, uh, O, I, J is the inner product of phi, I and phi, J. So this is O an invariant operator. And we call it fundamental operator because it's a building block for all the possible O an invariant terms which can appear in the action. 
And this operator doesn't have to be local. So for such a general action, um, we can uh, find its coupling constant, or you can say it's a coupling function. But I will still uh, use the coupling constant term because the different lattice sites just distinguish different uh, coupling constants. So we can, so with those uh, coupling constants, we can act infinitesimal RG transformation on this action. Then the change in the coupling constants define the beta functions. And this general, very general beta function is actually uh, fixed by the beta function of the uh, constant, which is uh, also free energy and the beta function for the fundamental couplings. So this is the first discovery of our uh, work. So I will go into detail, very detail in the next slide about this point. And the second, so, uh, sorry. I'm sorry, um, this is the Banjin. Um, can I just ask a quick question? Sure. Um, you might have said this, but I missed it. So here I and J are the spatial indices? Uh, Space-time indices. Right, okay. Um, so you're starting out with a theory that's local, uh, correct? Mm -hmm. um, so, but here I'm not sure if you're imposing any spatial locality or I and J can be whatever. And at what no. point does- I haven't imposed any locality to this general action. So the general okay. action can be anything. But later I will start from a local theory and to see how it evolved on the RG. Okay, all right. Yes, so even though we consider a non-local terms in the action, the beta functions are still constrained. So this is, we can verify. Mm -hmm. Okay, Okay. all right, thanks. And, uh, Han, sorry, just to make sure one more thing, it's a separate uh, question, but so uh, here, I guess you, you've chosen ON, so, uh, uh, to be the symmetry. So the, this O sub i j is the building block for all symmetric operators. But if I yes. do S O N, then I would have something that looked like a, what do you call that? Um, like a color singlet thing that uh -huh, uh -huh. involve multiple phi's that cannot be built from quadratic terms. And I, I suppose that does not change the story a lot or does that it matter? Doesn't. Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Okay. Yeah. For, for an action with a particular symmetry. So uh -huh. here I'm, uh, uh, here this action only includes the symmetric terms. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see. And the second result uh, I will present is the Wilson Fisher fixed point action in the larger limit. This means the quantum algae allow us to land on the Wilson Fisher fixed point. And then um, we can find the fixed point couplings and also the free energies, which parametrize the effective action. Okay, let me uh, start with our first result, the constraints among beta functions. The full story is in this paper. You can check it on archive. So before I talk about the, our method quantum RG and our new results, let me review the conventional RG method. We certainly start with a, a well-defined UV action with appropriate lattice regularization. In order to choose an RG scheme, we separate the UV action into two parts, the reference action and the, the deformation. The reference action is invariant on the RG. So here for the Owen vector model, we choose the reference action, the same as the action of a trivial insulate, insulator. So it is an ultra local and the quadratic action. And then the deformation contains two types of terms. The one is the hopping term from site I to site J. And the other one is on-site interacting term. In the um, coupling space, we um, assign the origin to be the reference action, then the, um, the, the point corresponds to the UV action is determined by only the deformation. So every point in this uh, coupling space corresponds to an action. 
Now we would like to do an infinitesimal RG step on this, this UV action. So this is implemented by a linear operator. Here I, I denote it as e to the minus hdz, whose meaning will be obvious later. So this is the linear operator implement the RG step, which includes both uh, integrating over the fast modes and also rescaling of coordinates and fields. So this complete those calculations and give a modified action SDZ at, at the RG time DZ. So, and uh, the UV action gets modified by extra terms encoded in the delta S1. So here DZ is the RG time. Um, and also it's the log logarithmic uh, length scale. So by doing the RG transformation, we lower the UV energy scale by e to the dz. So this is the conventional um, RG acting on a UV action. Now, in order to introduce the quantum RG method, we, I need to uh, present the alternative formulation for this conventional RG. We also call it classical RG in order to distinguish it from quantum RG, I will introduce later. And the alternative formulation is based on a bunch of new defined vectors. So firstly, we define the phi vectors, which is the product of phi cat on every lattice side with every uh, flavor. And then the phi vector has inner product satisfy this rule. And then based on the Phi vectors, we can define state vectors, which are the superposition of phi vectors. For example, the state vector associated with the reference action, uh, it is defined as a superposition of phi with the coefficient equal to the Boltzmann weight associated with the reference action. Accordingly, we can also define the vectors of deformation. And uh, for later convenience, I will also define the unit vector whose coefficients are all one. So here I've already expressed the reference action and the deformation uh, as a function of fundamental operators. So again, in the coupling constant, in the space of coupling <coughs> constant, now the origin is co corresponding to the unit vector and the, the, the point corresponding to the UV action now corresponds to the vector of deformation. And every point in this space um, corresponds to an state vector. So this means the whole coupling space uh, is a vector space. And uh, um, in terms of those state vectors, we can express the partition function as an overlap between uh, the reference action uh, vector and the deformation vector. And now with those definition um, of, an, of an action, of an UV action, we want to implement the infinitesimal RG step um, on this model. As we, uh, as I said before, so it is implemented by a linear operator. Now notice the partition function and the reference action are invariant under the RG transformation. So we can do the RG transformation by insert the RG operator in between the two state vectors. When it acts on the left, then it uh, give a invariant vector and also invariant partition function. When it acts on the right, then it gives a deformation, a correction. So this leads to the flow of the deformation, deformation vector. So a little algebra, um, which I didn't uh, uh, present step by step. So um, by doing the integration over fast mode and uh, rescale the space time and fields, we are able to find the RG operator is generated by the so-called RG Hamiltonian with this concrete form. It is written in terms of the phi operator and the pi operator. They are canonical conjugate. And the phi operator is the eigen operator for the phi vector, give eigen value phi. And if, if you are uh, from the high energy community, so this 
formalism is the rewriting of uh, exact RG flow from uh, by John pa John Pachinski. And actually, the uh, Schrodinger equation for this RG Hamiltonian is the exact RG uh, equation uh, by these people. Okay, this is our reform, uh, alternative formulation for the classical RG. Then let's uh, consider, uh, let's introduce our new method quantum RG. So notice here, uh, if the UV deformation contain the uh, quartic interaction, then by doing infinitesimal RG, we would generate uh, terms, um, higher order terms in phi. So in this correction, so it, this makes the RG flow very hard to keep track of because many high order terms would generate and uh, we cannot con consider all of them. But if, if the uh, UV deformation doesn't have the quartic term, higher order term will not be generated. This inspires us to expand this deformation vector in terms of vectors, uh, associated with quadratic action. So in this space of couplings, the previous statement is equal to, we want to find a set of uh, vectors in the subspace of the fundamental couplings, which can expand all the vectors in the whole space. So this is equal to uh, looking for the basis vectors of this vector space. And we can find the basis vectors are actually defined um, as vectors associated with the uh, summation of fundamental operators. So here T is the source of fundamental operator and the basis vectors are labeled by this collection of source. And then we can check uh, this deformation vector can be written as a a linear superposition of the basis vector with coefficient in this form. We can check this equality by insert this uh, coefficient back and integrate over variable T and the P. And finally go back to the original deformation. And I will later also call this coefficient the wave function of fundamental couplings. So notice, um, here, the fundamental coupling acquire fluctuations. This is equivalent to a projection process that I project at any point in the coupling space down to the subspace of fundamental couplings. And this projection acquires some fluctuation in the uh, subspace and introduce the quantumness to the whole method. And then um, we want to do an infinitesimal RG transformation. Um, due to this expansion, the RG operator now act only on the basis vectors rather, uh, rather than the whole uh, deformation vector. And this induce the flow of the fundamental coupling only, uh, which is quantitatively encoded in the beta function of free energy and the beta function of fundamental couplings. And a little algebra shows for the Owen vector model, the beta functions take these two concrete forms. And then, um, so from the second line, we can reorganize the terms and introduce new variable T prime and P prime. Then we can write the resulting deformation vector as a superposition of a new set of basis vectors. Of course, the wave function uh, is modified accordingly. Now we can see, we can view the infinitesimal RG transformation um, in another way as the, the imaginary time evolution of the wave function of the fundamental couplings. And the evolution is completely determined by the Hamiltonian fixed by the beta function of free energy and the beta function of the fundamental couplings. Here, the Hamiltonian is an operator determined by uh, operator T and the operator P. They are uh, canonically conjugate uh, operators. And the operator T is an eigen operator of the 
basis vector giving eigenvalue t as fundamental couplings. So we now we transform the RG process to a time evolution problem. And uh, equivalently, we can go into the space of coupling constant. This transformation is actually projection the classical RG trajectory onto the subspace of fundamental couplings. So this in, introduced some fluctuation uh, in the path uh, of the path. So we no longer have single paths in the fundamental coupling space. Instead, we have a uh, fluctuation uh, and introduce the quantumness to this process. So this is why we call it quantum RG method. And we also call it bulk Hamiltonian, uh, the evolution Hamiltonian as bulk Hamiltonian because we can treat the RG time as an extra direction for of a whole system. Then the UV and IR uh, theory of the original system are boundary for the whole system. So we call it bulk Hamiltonian as well. Then at RG time Z, we can find the effective action, which is encoded in the uh, final wave function uh, at RG time Z by doing this time evolution. Uh, now, may, may, oh, yeah. may I ask a question? So. Sure. Here, uh, if we keep track of the so-called quantum mechanical evolution of the RG trajectory, as you said, it's no longer a fixed trajectory, but it's more like a wave propagating through this space of, uh, yeah, I don't know what this space is called, but yeah. Uh, space. Uh, uh -huh. And, uh, but if I, if I eventually just still want to look at what the classical trajectory looked like, uh, what do we do? In the sense oh. that, you know, in the end, um, I want to have some way to process the wave function that I get. Um, so meaning that mean, once I have the wave function, how do I back out the, 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 the black line, the classical uh, from, the, from the red area yes. to the black line. That's oh, right. yes. Yes. Mm, so suppose we um, initially only know the evolution of the wave function, then we can do the integration of the fluctuating fundamental couplings to obtain the black, the, the deformation along black line. Uh, but how do I know, sorry, maybe I'm, I'm missing it. So um, I, I think you're doing, everything you have done here is completely exact, right? So, uh, yes. but uh, as far as I understand the conventional RG loses some information. So it's kind of, the way I understand it is kind of picking some, Averaged trajectory um, amongst all oh, the trajectories okay. that can be that go go through the red area. So uh, I'm just wondering what so that by, is. So by by saying uh, lose some information, do you mean the truncation of operators? Like for classical it, RG, we cannot consider all the operators. Okay. Yeah, it probably means truncation of operators, right? So, uh -huh. so okay, <clears throat> but but here, so suppose in the Along the black line, we don't do the truncation. Uh -huh. we, we still consider all the operators. Then the red area, the projection uh -huh. uh, encode all the information without oh. any truncation. Oh, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So you're just saying that I could effectively, if I can really calculate the last line, the, 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 the log stuff mm, um, right. and find ways to truncate, then I would be really just recovering the black uh, trajectory. That's uh, that's what you're trying to say. Um, yeah, I, yeah, do, I, do, did you say truncate or not? So I said I'm, truncation, yeah, I said truncate. Yeah, I'm, I mean, there's no truncation at all. So if you know the, the psi z exactly, mm -hmm. then by taking the log of this stuff, you mm -hmm. will get to the action exactly without right. any truncation. Right. So and then okay. So mm. I understand. So right. Okay. And the and the and the and the conventional RG step is just a truncated version of of this more exact formulation. Right. You are right. You are right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Mm, so this is 
Um, so basically quantum RG is a alternative way to doing the RG, um, but it's, it's, um, it, it allow us to keep track of the RG flow easily. So we don't need to consider like large, large number of higher order terms. Uh, yeah, so now it's time to, uh, to, to show why the beta functions are highly constrained. So the best way to show this is to compute the expression of the beta functions for any action, as I shown before. So um, suppose we start from any action, include any Owen invariant terms in that action. The change in the action by an infinitesimal RG transformation is encoded in the beta function for these general Owen invariant terms. Here, the beta functions are uh, labeled by the subscripts as lattice sites of this Owen invariant operators. And K uh, is a superscript, meaning the beta function coupled to uh, the product of K fundamental operators. So, <clears throat> and uh, by doing quantum RG, we know the change in action is encoded in the time evolution of some wave function, encoded the initial condition, initial couplings. And then the, this equality, uh, would give us yeah, the expression of the beta function, general beta function. So we can see um, uh, it's the expression is completely fixed by the uh, beta function of free energy and the beta function of fundamental couplings, regardless what the initial couplings are. So in other words, if we know these two beta functions, beta zero and beta one, we can just write down the general beta functions. This means the general beta functions are highly constrained. And also this is uh, not only true for the Owen vector model, it's true for, for other model as well. So we verify this fact in this paper in detail. Okay, so is there any questions? So far, uh, yeah, I do have a question, but this may be a little bit more general. So, if you think um, you could answer it at a later point, that would be fine. But my question is: uh, the specific choice of H seems to be coming out of, uh, say, a some RG step that fixed the infinite massive phase of bosons, right? Uh, H, you mean the H bulk, the Hamiltonian? Yeah, the H bulk. Uh -huh. um, and you are doing it everything in the real space basis. So I'm wondering, mm. um, does that create any form of bias or it's just equally good if I start off with I and J effectively labeling K momentum? Uh, I'm doing everything yeah. in K space and I have some dispersion which mm -hmm. in case space look like some form of local mass, if you will, right? Um, if I and J are treated as site index, if, you know, K is treated yes. as site index. Um, does that make any difference or it's just sometimes it's more convenient to start off doing it in real space, sometimes it's more convenient in case space. So basically they are different way of doing RG. Right. So here I choose the reference action in the real space right. and the meaning we choose the origin of coupling space as the fixed point of insulating phase. Cool. If we go to the uh, case space, we can mm -hmm. choose another type of reference action, which right. is invariant on the RG. So the, the RG transformation would be different in different scheme. So mm -hmm. yeah, and this is just to uh, relabel the origin of coupling space and will not change the physical uh, physics during the RG flow. Right, so I, I guess maybe I'm effectively asking a practical question as in mm -hmm. if the actual IR is, you know, in, in the massive phase in the end, then, you know, maybe, maybe it's easy to complete the truncation process and uh, find out the simple RG trajectory in the conventional sense. But maybe, 
if we ha had we chosen the the one that is not so compatible with the actual IR, um, so, your description is still going to be valid, but probably it's going to be hidden in some maybe messy, more messier, uh, messier uh, wave function of coupling. Is so do you mean the convergence of the RG, like like the like yeah, the because approximation? I, I would, uh, Right, so it's just that my expectation is that you know some some RG process is gonna a specific RG process is usually designed according to the fixed point that it you know the, that we want to hit or or uh, or or the, the fixed point we want to start. With. Yeah, that's true actually. So if if we change some uh, start starting point, then the uh, study about what happened later on would be change and the efficiency will also change. Mm -hmm. um, but in the Owen, Owen vector model, we checked that if we um, use another reference action in the momentum space, uh -huh. then actually the output, the, the effective action at RG time Z will not change quantitatively. I see. So they look quite similar huh. just with some correspondence. I see. Mm. But for, for other model, I'm not sure what, what happened about the efficiency, yeah. I see, okay, thanks. Yeah, sure. Um, and okay, um, and this is our uh, like for first result for the OM model and it's, uh, it's actually very general. And then um, we would like to see, so not, not only the property we um, so not, not, not only this uh, good property during RG flow, we can find using the quantum RG method. We can also explore the deep IR limit of the RG flow by quantum RG method. So consider a very simple case. So for a Z independent bulk Hamiltonian, if we can solve this Hamiltonian, then we can solve the, uh, evolution problem completely, starting from any initial state. So if we can solve the eigen, eigenstates and eigenenergy of this Hamiltonian, then we can expand this, um, we can expand the initial state in terms of the eigenstates. And then the time evolution only uh, changes the uh, coefficient of this expansion according to the eigenenergy. So this is what we learned from the quantum mechanics. And uh, then finally by insert the expression of the um, final wave function into the partition function, we can uh, get the property uh, in, the, in the RG time, at the RG time Z. So for example, uh, we can find in, in the IR limit, the fixed point effective action is actually determined by the ground state of this bulk Hamiltonian. And also the excited state of this bulk Hamiltonian determines the form of scaling operators and their scaling dimensions in the IR and so on. So um, we basically we can find all the IR properties from the eigenstate and eigenvalue of the bulk Hamiltonian. But life is not easy. Usually the bulk Hamiltonian is very hard to solve. This is what happened in the Owen vector model as well. So now let me show you um, uh, the, the effect, how, how we find the effective action of the Owen vector model. So firstly, let me write down the, the concrete form of the bulk Hamiltonian for the Owen vector model. So it is in terms of the uh, T operator and the P operator, they are chronicle conjugate. And uh, notice there is a cubic term, which makes the bulk Hamiltonian not solvable. So we take another way. We still try to find the uh, expression of the deformation vector. And we use the past integral formalism to rewrite the time evolution. This gives us, um, um, the contribution, the, the deformation vector is contributed by 
all the possible paths in the subspace of fundamental couplings. And each pass is weighted by this Boltzmann weight of the bulk action um, plus the UV boundary action. So here I add the Z uh, superscript to both P and T uh, variables in the pass integral formalism to indicate they are actually Z dependent bulk fields. And of course the UV boundary action only uh, depend on the boundary field T0 and P0. So this looks like still hard to solve, but notice the bulk action depend on the P only linear in a linear way. So we can integrate out the P at all Z to get a data function, which means the bulk for the Owen vector model is a constrained, uh, is constrained bulk. So this means all the paths in the bulk is deterministic. And then we can integrate over uh, T and also P zero, since it's only quadratic uh, appeared in the, S, uh, in the UV action. And then this would give us a quadratic term of T zero. And also we need to integrate over uh, T zero um, as well to get the deformation vector. This means the deformation vector is contributed by the path with fluctuating initial condition, but with deterministic uh, path in the bulk. So we are left with a single integration over T zero by, by, by define a new variable related to the T0, we are able to express the effective action as uh, this integration of some Boltzmann weight of the path over the uh, initial, uh, initial uh, UV field. And this is the exp expression for the effective action. If we are able to integrate over the fluctuating uh, initial condition, we are able to get the exact form of the effective action. However, it's hard. So we, uh, we, we only consider the larger and limit result because in the larger and limit, the fluctuation around the saddle point is highly suppressed. So we can directly equal the effective action to the, um, to the exponent in the Boltzmann weight by replacing the fluctuating field by its saddle point solution. So here X bar is the saddle point solution of fluctuating X with, uh, which, is which is determined by saddle point equation like uh, obtained here. So each term in the saddle point equation is obtained by varying the fluctuating X uh, in, the, in the exponent, in the exponent of the Boltzmann weight. Okay, then since, so here the, the way to get the IR effective action is a bit more technical. So, but anyway, uh, we can still proceed. Um, since this set of point equation is finite, we can expect the solution is also finite. Then we can um, expand the solution in terms of phi square. Because uh, the phi square appears in one of the term in the saddle point equation. So there is a constant contribution to the saddle point solution, which is lattice site independent if we choose a uh, translational invariant uh, theory. Then this constant is in general Z star dependent and it satisfy a simpler equation which is uh, determined from the saddle point equation without the phi dependent term. And then we can also um, obtain the coefficient in this expansion by solving the saddle point equation uh, order by order. And then with this 
um, x bar as a function of phi in mind, we can proceed to study the effective, the property of this effective action. Here, um, um, so maybe I forgot to mention this, this M matrix uh, we use is proportional to the hopping matrix we defined in the UV. So in general, we can, um, we can give the hopping matrix a very usual form depending on the Laplacian. And it describes the exponential decay hopping amplitude in the system. And then with this hopping matrix, we are able to find the quadratic term in the effective action in phi takes this following term. Then by stare at this quadratic term a little bit, we can find there are two different cases. So there is a constant piece x0 plus a plus one appeared in this kernel. If this constant is non-zero, then in the large z star limit, this quadratic term contribute to the effective action as a mass term. This means the RG flow lead us to the symmetric gap phase. But if this value is, uh, if this uh, constant is zero, then the quadratic term would depend on the Laplacian in a non-trivial way. So this means we are at the critical point and the RG flow will lead us to the uh, wilson fisher fixed point if space-time dimension is less than four. And then because there is a e to the two z factor here, we, we can see that the action is actually local at only length scale larger than e to the z star. So if we would like to get a local effective action, we need to rescale the coordinate and the field accordingly. Then with this scaling rule, we are able to write down the quadratic term in phi in this scale invariant form. So this is our final goal to find the effective action, to write some action in the scale invariant form in the large Z star limit. Okay, then following this spirit, we can uh, write down the scale invariant form for the whole action. So in order to do this, we define the scaled, rescaled uh, hopping matrix and the rescaled variable X prime, which is the phi dependent. Um, so this satisfies the rescaled equation of motion. Notice there is a scale dependent term, meaning we need to consider two different situations for the resulting uh, effective action. So here, when, when D is larger than four, then this part, the, um, the capital X minus small x part should be, um, if, if it is finite, then the right-hand side goes to very large indefinitely, which cannot equal to a finite uh, left-hand side. Um, and this means this, uh, um, X, uh, this capital X prime minus small x should be zero. So this give us a situation for D larger than four. When D is less than four, we can see the X prime actually have a very non-trivial um, solution for this saddle point, saddle point equation. And then we can reach the two different situations. When D larger than four, we can insert our um, saddle point solution. And uh, finally, the effective action is quadratic in phi. And this means we, the RG flow finally take us um, back to the Gaussian fixed point. And when D is less than four, um, so since the X prime is non-trivial in phi, then our effective action is more complicated. So it depends on phi in a very complicated way. So this is the effective action for the um, Owen Wilson Fisher fixed point. It is scale invariant and uh, uh, it's the final destination of the RG flow when D less than four. Okay, so so far I've talked about a lot of 
uh, technical things about what the effective action express. Um, so it, uh, I talk, I talk about this five field and X prime a lot, but do they really have a physical meaning or they are just uh, some complicated functions? So, and the answer for this is that they do have physical meanings. In order to show this, we can deviate from the critical point a little bit. This can be done by deforming the hopping matrix, uh, an infinitesimal amount. So here, epsilon and epsilon prime are infinitesimal numbers. And sorry, there are two ways to deform the hopping matrix. We can deform the off-diagonal elements, off-diagonal hopping elements, and also we can deform the diagonal elements. So by doing these two deformations, we actually realize um, a UV action with two Owen vector insertion or one uniform o Owen singlet insertion in the UV. This will result additional terms in the effective action in the IR uh, when Z star is very large. So the two terms have Z star dependent coefficient with certain exponent, meaning they are scaling operators in the IR. And one term is um, describes the two Owen vector in the IR, and the other one uh, represents the Owen singlet in the IR. And here, using quantum RG method, we can also find the relation between the uh, IR operator, IR scaling operator, and the UV operator phi. We make connection uh, between them. And the, from the exponent, we can see the IR Owen vector has the scaling dimension equal to the free boson. And the IR Owen singlet has the scaling dimension too. So these are the results consistent with previous figure study. something out. No? Sorry, is there questions? Okay. Mm. Okay, so uh, in this way, we can see, so previously, although we use a lot of symbols in the effective action, here the symbols have their meanings. They are uh, scaling operators in the UV or IR. So um, in this way, we are, uh, we study the effective action uh, for the Owen vector model in the IR and in, in the larger limit. So let me conclude uh, my talk today. So basically I talk about non-perturbative RG flow of the Owen vector model. So the first um, result we obtained by the, by the quantum RG method is that we found that the beta functions are highly constrained along the RG flow and the other result we can get is the form of IR effective action in the larger limit. So here, the effective action is a transcendental function of the two scaling operators in the IR. It's a scale invariant uh, action. So the, uh, there are two scale dependent terms. The first one would, would be um, decay down to zero if uh, in the D less than four uh, case. So this means the UV interaction is not uh, important in our IR effective action. And the last scale dependent term is a constant, which means the, which, so this is actually the free energy accumulated during the RG flow. We cost grain the system and then accumulate uh, free energy. So this, so in, um, in conclusion, this is the effective scale invariant effective action. And the more details are in these two papers. So if you are interested in, then you can check it on archive. Thank you. 
Thank you for the wonderful talk. And now we are open for questions. Uh, hi. Well, is it okay to ask a question? Yeah. Hi. Oh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, not, not very clear. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? I was trying to ask. You can hear me. Maybe I'll, ask. The... I'll ask in the chat, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That'd be better. Uh, yeah, though I asked a lot of questions, but uh, uh, I'm actually curious. So, uh, uh, does this method, um, can I see the unitarity of the field theory that I'm dealing with in this formulation? Um, mm. I'm asking because it seems like, uh, you know, well, there are these interests in, in studying non unitary CFT that controls a pseudo criticality. And mm -hmm. also, I think I, I vaguely remember some statement about an ON model. If you take N to be some randomly chosen number, not even integer, it's some non unitary stuff. But apparently, it looks like it looks to me that the way that you formulate things doesn't even care if N is, <laughs> is integer or not, right? So everything is just Gaussian, and then N looks just like some analytical, I mean, some number that you can always just. Pick right. Anything. So the unitarity is not required in our method, and we can study non-unitary theories. I see. So even theory with complex uh, couplings. I see. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I see. Oh yeah, but that maybe technical wise, maybe more we need to be more careful about that case. Yeah, because. Uh -huh. Yeah, some Gaussian integration, something like that. Yeah. I see you're saying you want to make sure that things that were supposed to be convergent needs to be convergent. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, yes, yes. I see. I see. Uh, I see. Um, okay, Yuri's question is uh, if there are multiple stable fixed points, does H bulk have degenerate ground states? Oh, it's a great question. Mm, let me see. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that if this is true because if, um, so here, let me show the box. So, um, so if there are multiple sta uh, oh, stable fixed points. Um, yeah, the question is if there are multiple stable fixed points, does each bulk then, have to be in Yeah, then, then I'm confused how the RG flow towards these, these multiple fixed points because so, like in our method, we always keep track of the evolution. Like we care about the trajectory more than the final destination. So we need to go towards some fixed point. That's our ground state of edge bulk. So now I don't have a picture about how to flow to multiple fixed points. Do you mean- um, Yeah, I guess maybe you, for, for example, we could say, let's somehow start with tricritical icing and you could either decide to turn on the field to turn it make it completely trivial or you could decide to do something so that you keep the z2 symmetry and it flows to the icing uh, cft so maybe this is really yeah, i mean it's not like completely stable fixed point but it's semi uh -huh. uh, it, it yeah happens. i think that depend on situation. So, mm, so if the H bulk has, so if we don't, don't know what the fixed point structure, we, we compute the H bulk has degenerate ground states. Mm -hmm. mm, uh, 
So yeah, yeah. I thought about this a little bit before, but I don't remember what what's my conclusion is. I yeah, but I yeah. I thought about like for a stable fixed ring. So rather than a fixed point, then it's possible. So the edge bulk would have large number of ground state degeneracy, like with a phase factor difference, uh, different from ring? each other. Yeah, fixed the ring. What, 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 what correspond to fixed ring? Um, what, 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 what familiar situation would correspond to that? Some disorder problem? Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. You're not talking yeah. about spiral RG flow? No. OK. No. It's complete a ring. And uh -huh. uh, once, once, you, the, once the RG flow arrive at the ring, it uh -huh. will flow like, uh, like, like a circle. Oh, so it does look like spiral RG trajectory. Um, but it will not, not end at a point. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just mm. keeps going. It keeps going. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that case, the edge bulk do have degenerate ground state. I see. That's interesting. Yeah. See. Yeah, but I'm not sure how about discrete fixed points. Mm. Mm. Yeah, one other thing I wanted, I'm curious about is that the, what if I want to put in the Westermino Witten term <laughs> into okay. the story? That's a pretty nasty term to write in, in, in the way that you, you express O. Um, uh, have you thought about? But that's a topological term. So we're not driving RG flow, maybe. No, it does, right? We know as a fact that it changes the RG flow of a nonlinear sigma model in one plus one B. That's why there's a fixed point. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I deliberately say the West Amino Witten, I did not say the theta term. The theta term probably doesn't okay. cause local stuff. Well, okay. I mean, that's, but the, the, the West Amino Witten term, we do have examples that it, that it changes, changes the RG flow. Yeah, I think that's the, so for example, the like, like the matrix model would have such like term, like trace O, partial O, some, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, yeah, I think there's a way to, so, so for, for, such a, for such a theory, so we have an operator content in, in terms of like, uh, in terms of trace, trace some operator as a function of O, and uh, we we have infinite number of fundamental operators different from this O and vector model. So here we have OIJ, which is very simple. Right. Although it has indices label infinite number of sites, right. but the elementary operator is only is is only one. Mm -hmm. But the, in the matrix model, there are infinite number of fundamental operators, each correspond to a trace operator. Mm -hmm. So one trace is one fundamental operator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that case, the um, um, yeah we like we can also work on that case, but the bulk Hamiltonian is more complicated. For mm -hmm. example, it included the p square term, uh -huh. yeah, and high order terms, which is impossible to solve. I see. Mm. Yeah, and I think uh, Sonsek has worked on those models, ah. like matrix models before. That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I, I imagine it's not, there's no free lunch. Uh. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, so are there any <laughs> more questions from Yuri or from Devangin? Okay, um, if there are no more questions, so yeah, uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Han, for giving the wonderful talk. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It got pretty technical at the end, but it was. Oh, yes. Uh,
All right. See you. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot.